What the 30 visits that the Cowboys have had tell us about their draft strategy uh, coming up this season. Big shouts out to Blogging the Boys. Uh, always doing great work covering these Cowboys. And so I, I found this to be interesting. Obviously, um, there's 30 visits is a, is a part of this draft cycle that we always have. And as we know, the Cowboys have situated themselves as they typically do largely, but even more so this year into where the draft is going to matter major in their offseason development as a team. Um, that It's going to be a major team builder for them is just utilizing the draft. And so what can we learn from the way that they're going about their draft from the dudes that they're, you know, that they're having to visit, right? Um, I know you, uh, Blake, are super big on this whole draft season and the ways this goes. And so yep. um, I obviously am going to lean in some ways on your perspective on this, but uh, our friends from Blog and the Boys, Tom Ryle and Roy White, shout out to Rowdy Wright, um, put some of this together. And, you know, they talked about the ways in which, you know, in past history, particularly with this Cowboys team, you've seen some of the guys that they've drafted. A lot of these guys that they've drafted, in fact, have been, you know, in uh, in Frisco visiting the Cowboys for these 30 visits, right? The, these things, particularly for this team, tell you a little bit of something about the way that they're thinking, the way that they might go about things. And so um, of their, you know, the targets that they have, I think there's probably about 20, 20 names that um, that the blog and the boys have put together from reputable reports that have visited the, the Cowboys and probably the top seven highest rated, highest rated players on their list. Five of them are offensive linemen and four of them seem to be um, guys that you could easily take at 24. Yep. And so with that being the case, like it seems like that would then push you to the idea of a offensive line, which I, th I think we know at first round, but then also um, two other players are ranked by analysts as being in or near the first round. Also defensive linemen. One is a defense tackle. One is an edge. So it seems like big boy on the def uh, on the line in the trenches is going to be the way that they go about this almost exclusively, they're going to focus in that way. Yeah. Um, the Cowboys are, you, 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 sometimes you don't want to tip your hand quote unquote with your visits and all that stuff, but it's very evident by the Cowboys transactions, or should I say lack thereof transactions that they will be drafting a big boy with their 24th pick. Now they still have visits with the Brian Thomas juniors of the world's in case a CD Lamb type guy. Now, I'm not saying he's CD Lamb and I don't have him rated that high. I'm just saying, as far as like someone who's mocked to go really high and all of a sudden he slips to 24 and you don't have a draft profile on him, how are you going to draft him? So they still have those, or even if that's not their number one target. It's very obvious that they are going to be getting a big boy and offensive lineman in the first round. I think you can almost pencil that in unless something absolutely insane were to happen in the draft and one of these big time edge rusher drops and they just feel really good about him. I think we can pretty much surefire and old lineman will be picked at 24. And I think that 30 visits kind of coincides with that. Yeah. Fuaga, Fatanu, Powers Johnson, Barton, and uh, Kingsley, Sua Mataya. Yep. Uh, BYU. BYU. Those are the five guys that are offensive line visits that they've had that, are, like, I think consensus big board puts them around that first round, first 32 pick. Uh, area and the other guys are Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle that I know you love quite a bit. Yeah, out of Texas. And then Darius Robinson, the edge out of Missouri. Are yeah. those the other like first round graded guys? And those guys, are, you know, defensive yeah. players as we mentioned. Yeah. So it seems like big boy in that w way mm -hmm. early on is where they're thinking. As yeah. we move forward, right? Um, there's some other when we're talking about needs, the places of need outside of offensive line, which is clearly another one. Linebacker, running back, right? Yep. Down the middle, down the pipes. Um, when you start talking about second round uh, graded players that they have had visit, three linebackers, Edron Cooper uh, from AM, and uh, Peyton Watson, NC State, Wilson, Junior Colson, think, yeah, Peyton Wilson, yeah. Co Junior Colson, Michigan, Michigan, and then also running backs, um, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, yep. um, and then also Jatavian Sanders, the tight end, and Malachi Corley, a wide receiver. So clearly... They're thinking whichever those guys seem to be available in that second round area, whether it's linebacker, running back, yep. those are the places where it seems like they're looking right now. I, I think my two highest, and I think that they are in the same place, obviously, with the 30 visits. They really, and hearing Broadus talk about it too, they really like Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. Like This is one that feels like a, a match made in heaven. The only drawback is the ACL. 
And mm. the the doctor that did that is a doctor that's familiar with the Cowboys. I forget his name, but he, he works with the Cowboys as well. So they obviously feel pretty good about that and have a good understanding of his recovery time. But I know the Cowboys are really high on Jonathan Brooks, an elusive guy out of the backfield, a pass catcher that also has some size to him. So I think that's also showing like, hey, the Cowboys didn't go and get a running back. What are we going to do? I don't understand. Is, um, what's our boy? Is Deuce Vaughn going to be our starting running back? Um, is, and then they re signed Rico. Is Rico Dotto going to be the starting Rico running Dotto. back? Yeah. I think if you are a Cowboys fan and you're talking to your friends at the bar and you're like, who are they going to do? Just show them this list. They're going to draft a running back. And the list goes even <laughs> deeper. Shout out to Swaggy Booties who asked, can't the Cowboys hide a lot of their visits, interests, and local visits? They're, I mean, I don't yeah. even know if that's hiding. That's just good use since you only have 30 visits when it comes to those 30 visits. You use your local, you know, the, the local visits and those types of things uh, to kind of supplement these things. Yeah. And then you use the 30 fits to, you know, add on to that. Yeah. But within that, that does tell us. And when we talk about running backs, there are the second round kind of graded guys. They also add guys all the way through. There's guys in that in their uh, 30 visits that in the third round area when Braylon Allen and Bucky Irvin from Wisconsin and Oregon, yep. respectively. Uh, Tyrone Tracy out of Purdue is a mm. fifth round type graded guy that shows up. All the way down to some sixth round and seventh round guys. Ray Davis? Uh, Amani Bailey is one of those guys. No, Ray Davis doesn't show up here. Uh, Rasheen Ali from uh, uh, from Marshall and then Jace McClellan from Alabama. Ooh, Jace. Are all running backs. That is, that's but, crazy. <laughs> I mean, it makes it abundantly clear that a running back is coming yeah. to this team, whether yeah. they go with them early mm -hmm. or whether they go a little bit later. They are planning on adding yeah. a running back for certain. I, I, um, I, and maybe, I, could you possibly see with the amount of guys that they put up here, maybe two? Is yeah. that, does that feel like too much? Um, I think with the re-signing of um of Nico or Nico, Rico Rico Dowdle, and then uh you also still have uh Malik uh, Davis, Davis yeah. there. And so I think with that it makes it a little bit more questionable. I think that if the Cowboys, when it comes to their pick at their second pick, I can't remember exactly what 56, something like that, their second round pick. If I think if Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson is not there for you. I think then they shift their focus to let's get the best linebacker on their board. Yeah. Now, I personally think it's Edron Cooper and Peyton Wilson. That kind of goes back and forth. So say one of those two guys available. Boom. You draft him. You go through the rest of the draft process. Then when you get to some of those names Reggie was mentioning towards the fifth, the sixth round, maybe you supplement and go, hey, running back's not going to be our strong suit. We're going to go get maybe a Braylon Allen or an Audric Estemine or uh, or a Jace McCullen, Ray Davis, late, late in the draft, late fourth round or fifth round kind of guys. Um, I think could be something that you go for. I think they really value Brooks and um, Benson. But like I just said, if they're not there in a second, then they might shift their focus. But nonetheless, a running back will be drafted in the second, or not in a second, a running back will be drafted. And I think, I think it's between running back and linebacker right there. That second round yeah. draft pick. And I think ultimately the thing that you strongly, the, the strongest thing that you learn is just the way that this board is probably going to line up. And of course, it's not. This is not the end all be all of the work that they're doing. There's a, it's a it's a robust staff that the Cowboys have there, and I'm certain that those guys are doing, guys and gals are doing a lot of work when it comes to digging into this draft. But what it seems like is a lot of their draft is going to be strictly predicated on need or focused mm -hmm. heavily into need. And I because, wish you didn't have so many. If you did yeah, not have so many, you could right. kill this draft. You could go, boom, we'll go BPA at 24. Oh, my gosh, Laitu Latu just fell to us at 24. We'll take him. Second round, we'll take Jonathan Brooks. Then we'll get a linebacker. Then we'll go get a receiver. Like, now you're like, okay, well, we have to kind of get a left tackle. And we got to get one, a And one that can right play in. immediately because there's not a lot of lines. <laughs> yeah. So you got to go the we early. We got to get a right? center. And now we got to get maybe a backup corner. Like, these, like, positions that aren't highly valued in the draft. But you need them on your team because you want, you want Chuma Adogo out there starting that left tackle for you next season? Give it a moment of silence for that. Don't think so. So you got to draft somebody good to replace what Tyron Smith, who was a top three pass blocker last year in the NFL when he played. Not great run blocker. Not great run blocker. Pass blocking was top three in the league. All pro season for a reason. You got to replace that if you want Dak healthy in the pocket. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, when I'm talking about linebackers, I did mention the three names that show up like second round graded when they that they have had for their 30 visits as we continue to talk about some of the 30 visits that we know of. Yep. That the the Cowboys have talked to, and of course, remember April first, they did have Dallas Day, so that's that's the local visits that we were talking about earlier. But 
uh, a linebacker and Trevin Wallace out of yeah, Kentucky, Kentucky, a fifth round type grade, and then uh, Jordan McGee out of Temple, Nathaniel Watson, Mississippi State. Those are six round type players. So it seems like they also have some like late draft oh, linebacker you, you got, you prospects gotta, that they're looking at as well. You got to double up on linebacker. I, I think that's one of those where mm. I think GM fans, I think we'll be fine with that. You draft Edron Cooper, Peyton Wilson, second round, whatever, cool. Sixth round, Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky, big physical linebacker that reads the hole really well, is still there. Why not go get like it's not like you have an overwhelming depth at linebacker. Go go spend that pick on that and sure that up. So a guy that rotates in that you have that you don't want to be like, okay. Well, we have just enough for the season and we got three three guys, and then the moment somebody gets injured, you're in the same position as last year. So I see no reason why you do not get two guys. I think you definitely get two linebackers because that was the position that you didn't play very well and you didn't have a lot of depth. So I think you need to double up on high and low in draft capital. Uh, on the text line from the 903, then trade back and get some more picks. Uh, I agreed. Mean, I think I, I don't know that anybody here is out on that. I think one of the things that's easy, though, is to look at it and say, well, you just need to trade back. And really, that ends up being a need for a partner to be, to be found there. The biggest part. Uh, however... I think I also want to ask, do you trust the Cowboys and the decision makers to do that? Because, it, I mean, there have been stories, and of course, they are stories. We have to treat them as such, but where, where the Cowboys did not seem to adequately consider opportunities to trade or do things like that on draft day yeah. in a way that would maybe appease those of us on the outside of that building. I, I think I think you bring up a good point. It sounds great in a vacuum. Yeah, trade back and get more draft picks because you got a lot of needs. But like Reggie said, it takes a trade partner wanting to do it and thinking it's a fair deal to... Maybe I think what most people surmise is you get a third round pick and you move back into either the early second round or you like swap with like Buffalo or Kansas City or the or the uh, Ravens and get like the late first round or early second round. And then you get their third round pick. Um, I think it looks good. But do we really trust the Cowboys to make the best decision and then maybe not waste that pick? Like, well, like if I they think, drop I think, the tight end, Reggie, I'm going to jump through this window. Well, there's no way. If they drop there's the tight no end, I'm going to jump Why through this window. Why are you doing window. that? Why are you creating Be that? No, don't put those, don't put them vibes out there. You don't have to do that. <laughs> because like, why would you do that? Now I, I will say, I trust Will McClay. Great drafter. Last year wasn't the best draft, but he's given me too much to work off of to see one bad draft and be like, well, I'm giving up. He can't draft. Like I still feel very confident that Will McClay is going to draft and scout and recommend the best people that the Cowboys should move forward with. But I think it is something, too, you have to be a little weary about. Are they going to choose the best trade partner? Is someone going to agree? Are they going to well, get I the best deal out of it? That's that's even more why I think you have to move back and give yourself more opportunities to yep. make some selections and get more things, especially when you look at it. A lot of these guys, there's a lot of first and second round guys that they're lo taking looks at. And, of course, that's just to, uh, and you have to. It's a smart way of going You never know who's going to fall. But... Give yourself another opportunity to maybe pick in that in that top one hundred. Uh, you do not have again. a fourth pick. You do not have a fourth round pick. You have, I think, two. You have three top three, so you have three within the top one sixty. And then you have some compensatory. And then picks you got a bunch there. of late round yeah. picks, which are depth pieces. I mean, let's let's call it what it is, guys. That are, for the most right now, you do have your your uh, diamond in the rough, if you will. That's oh my gosh, this guy came guy came out of nowhere, and now he's our third corner, and he's starting, or he's a really good receiver. It happens. Don't get me wrong. But usually, more times than not, those guys drafted that late are depth pieces. And right now, the Cowboys have holes all over when it comes to starting pieces. From the 903, thoughts on um, Penix at 24 or if they trade back 30 to 35. It just, <laughs> it's just, it would just be an insane use that would of resources. Be ins that would be insane. It you still got Trey Lance on your sense. roster. I, I just can't imagine that that'd be a good their, resource. Their, their fourth round pick this year was Trey Lance. That's pretty much what it's surmised to. That was who they drafted in the fourth round with, with trading away their fourth round pick. So. You're hoping that if, 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 if Dak moves on, you still have Trey Lance there. And I mean, if you even, I know there's been a lot of people talking about trading. Like if you need, the time is taking, if you were going to do that because of the no trade clause, you would have to have a whole coordinated effort. And it feels like that is very evidently not the case. The reporting that we have is that people feel confident that that thing gets done yep. at some point. And when I say that thing, I do mean an extension of some sorts, but need some protection up front. <laughs> now, nah, yeah. And that's absolutely, absolutely something that exists there.